Welcome to another episode of Ask the Pastors. Got a good question for you today, Absolutely. Travis. Yeah. Uh, this person was wondering, it was after you preached, mm -hmm. and uh, one of your points mm -hmm. was about the essential nature of community That's and right. the uh, format here for that is mm -hmm. small groups. So the question then was, if community is so essential, why do our small groups stop for the summer? Mm -hmm. A little bit of a bait there, kind yeah. of a jab, a little bit of a poke mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah. I appreciate the question. I do too. It's very perceptive. They're yeah. observing the uh, just the yeah culture of our church. And so I was really grateful for the question. So I did um, have some thoughts towards that. Uh, yeah. In our sermon, we discussed the essential nature of Christian community. And so small groups at First Family Church is a program. It's a program that we've designed to meet those needs in an individual's life. Prayer, Bible study, accountability, all those types of things. And so we've designed a program that uh, yeah, helps address those natures because of the demanding nature of leading and facilitating a small group. We do understand um, the uh, essential nature of health of a small group leader's life. And so we do allow them the freedom to take the summer off um, in order to go on vacation, spend time with family, rejuvenate themselves, things sure. like that. But um, I do believe that Christian community is essential. So even during the summer months, we offer many venues for that to continue on. So we do men's book clubs, we do women's Bible studies, we do park parties, we do mom's groups. The church calendar is quite full of Christian community even though we do allow our small groups a season off. Does that make sense? It does. And I think in the question, he mentioned the word fellowship. Right. So do you distinguish between fellowship and community? I do. I think fellowship um, it happens a lot of times on a Sunday morning. And so we're very grateful for that to happen. I don't. It's almost like the next step in that level of intimacy would be Christian community. Mm. So fellowship is you grab a cup of coffee at a, the cafe. Hey, how was your week? How you doing? Really grateful for that. My sermon, I was trying to encourage that the need for that deeper level of Christian community, holding each other accountable, um, being transparent, different things like that. So yeah, I think that happens best in a small group format or at least a Bible study format it takes time for Christian community. And in our small groups here, I think, one of the things that we mm -hmm. ask for in our small groups, and this is a progressive mm -hmm. development. Yep. Not everyone's perfect at it or great at it. Right. But I think the community aspect involves accountability, yep. uh, Bible reading, That's prayer. Right. And you want to walk us through, like, that is kind of part of those small groups, right? That's right. We pass out an ideal schedule, if you will, to our small group leaders. We give them a lot of freedom, but we kind of say, like, these are the four ingredients that are needed for a healthy small group to, to, uh, yeah, to be effective. So fellowship is one of those, time in the word, time in prayer, and time in accountability. Those are probably the four ingredients that we think makes the most healthy small group. And so it does, it takes time, it takes transparency, it takes, yeah, uh, a level of knownness for, for those sure. ingredients to all take place. And if I could add one thing, to your answer, yeah, uh, not to be jabby back, yeah, uh, but a member of First Family mm -hmm. is expected to be in a small group. Yep. So, would you say? I think mm -hmm. I would say this. I'm just one, and we can disagree. It's no yeah. problem. But if someone's a member, but were to say to us, you know, I've got a lot of community already. I'm in a men's group, or mm -hmm. I have a family that really hold each other accountable. I've got a lot of discipleship happening in my own family. Mm -hmm. I would still say, hey, that's fantastic. Yep. I would minimize that. But yep. as a member, mm -hmm. you didn't make a commitment to pursue together collectively with your church at least three key habits, that's celebrating right. on a weekend service, yep. growing in a small group, and serving on a team. So I would say you should still join a small group. Absolutely. Would you? Absolutely, because we need you. So you may say, like, I have all those things in my life but we're missing out Amen. on your community here at this It's body. a two-way street. hundred yeah, percent. That's really good. That's and good. I love your answer about rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, in creation, there's a day that's, that's called right. a sub sabbatical, so to speak, a Sabbath day. It's a day yep. of rest. So even in larger schedules, mm -hmm. annually, monthly, mm -hmm. the seasons of the year, yep. I think there's a sense in God's economy in general mm -hmm. where there is a time off for yep. 
rejuvenation. The land received yeah. that every seven years. Mm -hmm. So we could just appeal to that for an answer. Yeah. Like, hey, it's pretty natural yep. to take a break. <laughs> but I love the heartbeat behind the question. Yeah, I do like, too. Shouldn't we do that more? And the answer is yes. Amen. More community, more fellowship. How that looks, I think we have some freedom there. So Amen. Thanks for asking the question. It was a great question. Yeah, and thanks for your answer. We'll yeah. see you on the next Ask the Pastors.